Greetings fans, hyperfans and people just lost looking for videos of cats on YouTube. If any of you saw the video I uploaded last week of me unboxing that huge pile of stuff from Sir Toys, you know that I'm going to be reviewing my first ever knockoff Lego figures. So we'll start with looking at what we're going to review today. We have these two sealed bags from Enlightened Toys. Um, Knight's Castle Series 1009 and 1010. Um, and before I open those up, I just want to talk a little bit about knockoff Lego in general and the stuff coming out of China. The fact we're calling it knockoff Lego as opposed to third party building blocks just goes to show how strong that brand actually is. Um, they've introduced lots of new sets over the years, but they're basically exactly the same thing as when they released in the mid 1960s. There is a lot of knockoff Lego coming out of China. Um, and I like it when they do something a little bit more interesting than just copying what's going on in the West. For example, last time I was out in Guangzhou, we picked up this set of figures, who are basic Lego figures underneath. They have paper tabards chromed helmets and completely new sculpted weapons which I haven't seen in Lego sets before and their Three Kingdoms era Chinese guards. But what we have here with these two sets is pretty much a new combination of pieces packaged up to look at like an official Lego release. The logo, the numbering system, not an identical copy to Lego, but enough that a half-blind grandparent not understanding what they're buying is likely to pick this up by mistake. So let's open these up and see whether or not they're actually getting ripped off or whether we've got something decent in them. So, if I just empty this out, I'll do that onto the white to start with. So inside the silver foil bag, yep, that's everything out. We have an instruction sheet, very simple and a little poly bag. So, let's cut that out open. Now, there's very few pieces in here. Let's count those up. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Um, it does say nineteen pieces on the bag, so I guess they're counting the instructions as a piece as well. Not the same numbering system as Lego would use for pieces. Um, for example. The horse would all be one piece, because uh, they come already built. The hands and the body would be one piece, and they wouldn't count the instruction sheet. Ah, hang on a second. No, they're not counting the instruction sheet. There's another bit hidden in there. But still, on Lego numbering, it would be 14 pieces which I guess would be one of the little five pound boxes they do. Okay, so let's get this together. Okay, so... Horse's head goes on one side. That's... Paint works a little bit sloppy on the brown and the black is 
it's not so bad. You've got the sculpted in main, still the two horns, or little ears on him, other half snaps on. Not too much of a join line. The head's actually on a ratchet. So that's quite nice. We'll get the hands in. So he has... actually quite an interesting print on there because it's brought in at the sides in the same way as Lego tend to do with their female figures. Hmm, interesting. Head though is particularly male, um, very much the old classic Lego style, though it does still have the, let's see if I can get that in focus, You go. It does still have the shine points in the eyes. Okay, that's cool. I must say, it actually does feel pretty much on par with most Lego figures. Um, the plastic does not feel cheap. So let's just put him together in his most basic form, give him a weapon, see how he clip grips that. Mm. Arm popping out a little bit easier than with most Lego figures. The mewing you can hear in the background is because we are cat-sitting at the moment, so those of you who are lost looking for videos of cats, you found one. Okay. So, the saddle... Block pushes down on there. Probably just to raise him up a little bit because of the armour. And that goes with the saddle horn at the front. Yep, that's quite nice. Instructions over. Uh, it shows that you can give him his lance. You can turn that into a flag. Now that's definitely an old Lego Castle logo on there. Um, the blue doesn't 100% match with the uh, gold underneath it. It's a very, very flexible plastic. A lot thinner than the Lego flags ever were. The shield. That's a sticker on there as opposed to printed. And it's not particularly well centred. Um, at the back you can see that it's actually got an extruded handle rather than moulded on. So you actually have a hole in the grey plastic where you can see the shield through. The ah, where you can see the shield sticker through. Okay. So to get the knight totally armed up, let's take the head back off, slide on the armour. The armour print's pretty good. Again, that's definitely a piece I've seen on a Lego set before. It's only a flesh wound. The axe piece is exactly the same so you pop one in one way up one in the other way up this is quite a soft bendy plastic um, kind of the type that you'd get on 
on the new Dinobot horns, I guess. So, pop that onto there. I must say that's quite loose in the grip. Um, so I think over time, however I have it held, gravity's slowly going to bring it down to there. Let's see, pop him onto there. Ah, it hits the horse, it's going to stay up. The knight's helmet is one of those old bucket style ones. Um, quite nice detailing on that. You can see the mold line. That's forgivable. Um, the visor doesn't move up on it. It does have the hole in the top for the plume to stick in and that's quite tight. Let's just plonk that on him. Yeah, that's a, a decent little figure. Okay. So, the second one, who's obviously the bad guy knight, I'm just going to use the little tear mark that's in there, because I'm a bit more confident about not ripping stuff inside. Again, he's supposed to have 19 parts. Um, pretty much the same instruction sheet. Okay. Sketch map of fitting hand. And then the weapon instructions. Oh, now that's an interesting new weapon. I haven't seen that in a Lego set before. So they are doing some of their own sculpting as well. Bag open, empty the pieces out. Horse is exactly the same. Put it in black. The saddle is exactly the same. Put it in red. Let's have a look at the moulding on that and get some more light on that. So that's actually printed in silver and brown onto the black. So actually a little bit more detailing. Um, the brown is still sort of sloppy around the mane. But really quite forgivable. more standard body print again not 100% centered but let's have a look it definitely lives up to the scratch test popping the hands in I like the fact that the legs are not just red again but they're matching up with the arms and the black waist piece. Now the body part seems to be... Um, ah, that's not so good. It's that same soft plastic moulding, but this is based on the samurai armour that LEGO did with their Ninja Castle range. And whilst there is some mold leaking at the top that's not so difficult to get out that's a three colored print on the face the black the white teeth and the gray whiskers kind of cool that he's got one eye scarred out Standard motorcycle helmet backing, a um, little bit of 
mold flash at the top and then made entirely nightly by his visor mm. fits on quite loosely you don't have that satisfying click with some of the better molded pieces I'm probably going to have to sand that top bit down for it to open and close properly um, but it's quite loose on there and I can see that popping off quite easily so let's pop him on there together and in he goes he's got a Guan Yu style spear including red tassels thus suggesting that medieval knights were importing cool stuff from China way before we were Fits in the hand again quite loosely compared to Lego figures grips. Flag is exactly the same, but with a silver eagle, which I don't think I've seen on Lego before. And again the stickered shield. A little better put on this time. So there we have them. Now, to compare those to an official LEGO release, I don't have a lot of the night stuff to hand, but what I do have is a Headless Horseman figure, which is pretty much made of all official LEGO parts. Now, since it's the Black Horse, Let's compare that side by side with the Enlightened Toys one. Take off the riders. Take off that. And have a look at the detail differences. Well, the face is obviously completely different. You have a very Western childish print on the official Lego one, because it's for a Western child and a far more oriental style print on the Chinese one. Gosh, what a surprise. Sculpt looks near identical. There's a little indent at the back to help have the saddle, which isn't present on the KO. The legs are pretty much identical. The two halves on the official one are a slightly better match. Than the KO. Um, I have got the dragon helmet for the horse which I've had on my headless horseman. Let's see if that fits on the KO. It does, it's a little bit of a tight squeeze but no it certainly fits. Actually I think that one looks a little bit more menacing, so I'm probably going to be keeping him on display with my Headless Horseman. Figure-wise... Let me grab my Space Lego figure. Exactly the same height. Legs are exactly the same height. Let's do a leg swap seat. Okay, that's nice and tight. That's a little bit looser. But it fits there fine and dandy. It fits there fine and dandy. Let's do a weapon swap so we can compare the hands. Official Lego weapon into the knockoff hands again has that very satisfying click 
knockoff weapon into the real hands. It's a lot softer, and again, it's not been gripped that tight. So the figure, absolutely fantastic. The weapons, um, they look good, but they are definitely don't quite have the tolerance control that official Lego stuff does. Not surprised. Overall as a set though, that's sort of cool, I like that. Considering that the Lego Knight series is definitely a set that you need to army build for, and that even the larger sets only come with maybe four or five figures, it's definitely a good way of bulking out your army, especially considering that they are at dirt cheap prices at Sir Toys. Links below, and remember, if you're keeping the mint in package, you're not a toy collector, you're a box collector. I'll see you in the next review.